Hello, VIP kid teachers. So if you're following along with me in Proverbs, I am at Proverbs 28 today. And I actually read Proverbs 26 and 27. And I, I, write, about, I, I write down a bunch of things that stick out to me. But I'm just going to share one, one verse from each chapter so that this video isn't super long. So Proverbs 26, for lack of... Proverbs chapter 26, look, I'm used to that with VIP kid. Proverbs 26, verse 20. For lack of wood, the fire goes out, and where there is no whisper, quarreling ceases. Stuck out to me that, you know, sometimes I just need to turn away. When, when there's an argument on, you know, social media, our lives are online. A lot of our lives are online, our work lives, and so just... That just tells me, there's other scripture, but that, that tells me that sometimes, and for me, most of the time, the best thing is to turn away, but not always. Okay, Proverbs 27. Huh. There's a lot that stuck out to me, but this one, this one. Proverbs 27, verse 2. Let another praise you, and not your own mouth, a stranger, and not your own lips. I struggle with this, especially with this job, because when they send us our memories, they send us our, mainly our, you know, where it says how many classes you taught, and then it says how many apples you got, and this and that. I want to be able to share certain things to show new teachers what they can achieve, but I don't want to share other things because, like the five apples, because I don't want to, I don't want to discourage anyone as well. So there's, there's like a fine line and I'm trying to learn to guide through that because I remember being in groups and sometimes it was encouraging to see, hey, others got booked during Chinese New Year. And sometimes it, it was discouraging to see that others got booked and that I didn't. So it's, it's that's something that I'm still I'm still trying to, you know, be very careful of and be aware of others feelings and what is actually encouraging. So, OK, and Proverbs 28 is what I read today. Oh, there's so much that stuck out to me today. OK, Proverbs 28, chapter 28, verse 23. Whoever rebukes a man will afterward find more favor than he who flatters with his tongue. That is important to me. And I was following along with um, my pastor and his wife, their book. I was following along and it's asking, you know, where do, where do I lack boldness? And to me, it is telling the truth, being honest when I think it may hurt someone's feelings. <laughs> if I think something may hurt someone's feelings, I cringe and I want to go crawl in a hole. But sometimes I feel like sometimes I feel like it's necessary to tell the truth in certain situations. And I try to do it in the most loving way possible. But I still and I still am like, oh, please don't get your feelings hurt. Please don't get your feelings hurt. But but sometimes I've been reading all this scripture about, you know, telling the truth, you know, telling this other one. <laughs> Go back to yeah, Proverbs 27, faithful are the wounds of a friend. I want to, especially people that I know, I want to be able to share, you know, not just what I'm feeling, but in relation to scripture, share that with them because I would rather hurt them now in a loving way than to them get down the line and, you know, have that feeling of why didn't anybody tell me, you know, and feel like no one was there for them. So that's something that I'm trying to get better at is to being honest, even though it may hurt someone's feelings, but being honest to help others out when I know them. Now, strangers, I don't know. Um, I'm about to join a group and, you know, talk to other Christians who are in the Bible daily because I want to know, you know, what about what about a stranger? What about when, when I see something and I know it's not right, but maybe they're not Christian, but I know I could help them out. You know, where do I go about that? Where do I go about sharing Jesus with them to begin with? Because that's the most important. But if I know I can help someone out, I want to, that's just deep down inside me. I'm like, oh, I could help you. I could guide you. Oh, you know, I'm not going to save you. He's going to save you, but I could guide you. Like, I know the answer. I know the answer. And the more that I get in the word, the more the answer is just all up in my face. And, 
you know, even just driving from the dentist last night or yesterday, I started thinking, I was like, you know, I started praying and I was like, thank you, God. Like, I'm just, I'm just, I hear you and everything. I, I hear you when I go to the dentist, I see you and everything through people's words, through songs on the radio, this or that. And then a song started playing on the radio saying, you know, I see you and everything. And I was just like, oh, it's like, it's like God saying, I see you, you see me. It's just awesome. So I encourage you to get in the Bible daily and start it's going to start opening your eyes and your ears. It's just, it's wild, but it's not unrealistic. So happy teaching. And I hope you're getting in the Bible daily and that you have a group of people that you trust, because I also want to warn you that you could ask, you could ask advice from someone at church. You can ask advice from someone that you think you trust and you could get bad advice. So I, and that may seem like, oh, duh, but when you're reading the word, you're going to know for yourself through God's words, you know, and through, you know, what's in here, you're going to know for yourself so you can judge what others, what others tell you, you can discern for yourself. And that's really important. And I've gone through stuff in my life where I wish I would have known the word right then and there so that I could say, no, that's not true. And just run, run away from those situations. So I, I pray, I'm going to pray that, you know, that y'all will get in the Bible daily if you're really interested because it's going to change. It's changing my life. It's going to change your life. Happy teaching and happy reading.